it so dark? In the beginning, it is always dark. What is that? One grain of sand. It is all that remains of my vast empire. Fantasia has totally disappeared? Yes. And everything's been in vain. No, it hasn't. Fantasia can arise in you, from your dreams and wishes, Bastion. How? Open your hand. What are you going to wish for? I don't know. Then there will be no Fantasia anymore. How many wishes do I get? As many as you want. And the more wishes you make, the more magnificent Fantasia will become. Really? First wish is
Hey everyone, and welcome to the Chrono Show. Um, you can call me Andrews if you want to, but wow, this is I'm excited and feeling the goosebumps here. I get the opportunity to have an amazing podcast today. I want to introduce um, co hosting is NGG, Nintendo Gamer Girl. What's going on? Nothing much. How's everybody? Good, good. All right, and DJC Game Studios. What's happening? Good to see everyone. And our special guest, uh, Tammy Stronach. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Hey, I'm glad to have you here. So we got uh, some great questions for you throughout the time so we can talk about the Never Ending Story and Man in Which Films. So um, let's get started. Let's get to this right away. And I'm going to go with my first question. Um, let's see. I'm going to put it right here. Can you tell us how it all started from how acting began leading up to the Never Ending Story? Sure. Um, so I was sort of a ham as a little kid. I think we all know those kids that just need to perform. <laughs> so I would always come down to the kitchen and put on one Swan Lake or another for my parents. And um, they, uh, you know, put me in theater class. Uh, so um, I just happened to be in a acting class when the uh, casting director for The Never Ending Story uh, was in town and she happened to be friends with my acting teacher and um, they organized a lunch date in between all the castings. So she came by to my theater class and she kids a little bit early and she's the tail end of the class and saw me do a little scene in the class and was like, do you want to come audition for uh, this film? And I was 10 and I was like, you know, absolutely. Yeah, I'm playing Piglet and Winnie the Pooh right now. And I just did Oliver and I just love performing. And sure, I'll audition for your film. You know, I didn't know what I was doing at all. And I told my parents and they're like, yeah, sure. Go for whatever audition that is. <laughs> so uh, it was really an accident. Happy one. <laughs> Definitely a good experience. Um, how it all began. Um, Let's see my next question here. I want to make sure to get this out of the way and get the next one here. How did you prepare for your role in the never ending story? Um, we see an emotional role having been scared that nothing was coming. Um, well, I was I was a very serious girl and I took the role very, very seriously. So of course I read Michael Linda's book and uh, had conversations about with my mother primarily about the difference between the script and the book. Um, and I was in love with the world and the sort of the whole story. Uh, so uh, I, I just, you know, had a little notebook and I would think about my character and I would jot down adjectives that described her. Um, and, um, and I, I just, uh, I also just listened to the director. I mean, I think so much of, you know, it's so special when you have a really good director who can kind of plug you into a part. And like, it was crazy. I mean, the set was amazing. The costume was amazing. I had so much help from the things around me because the world, I didn't have to imagine it. It was literally built, you know? It was like, it actually existed, you know? So it was a really incredible situation actually. Thank you so much for that. Um, <clears throat> what does a never ending story mean to you? To me, the never ending story uh, is kind of about how young people have to imagine a better world than the big old mess that adults leave for them. <laughs> <laughs> it sort of repeats in history, right? Like you kind of are a kid and you're like, why is the world so messed up? And then you become an adult and you're like exhausted and you're trying to get your taxes in on time and yep. <laughs> you know, the house and you're like, I can't uh -huh. listen to the news. My head hurts and I can't do anything about it anyway. And you yeah. kind of lose the ability to kind of activate that kid in you that wants this world to be a good place for everybody and and the problem is is when we didn't let that thing in us die of course the the opportunities for change die with it so to me it's like a really political story it's about like <laughs> daring to dream for a better world and daring the young people of the world to be courageous enough to 
you know, tell us old people to just, you've had your chance. We're going to do a better job. <laughs> That's what I think it's about. We all got to keep that kid about, inside of us though, you know? Yeah. Right. It's about keeping the kid inside you alive. That's yeah. what it's about. And so yes. it's political. And it's also just sweet. It's like laugh, cry, feel, um, have fun, play. Like just don't goof play. off. Just make goof people off. laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Like be with your friends. Like don't ossify and become this grumpy robot that so much of adulthood is asking us. Exactly. To it's like yeah. Um, you know, it's, hard. it's really hard to keep the kid inside alive. It's just it's a hard job. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, can you remember your time on set with Barrett Oliver, Bastion, and Noah Hathaway at Treyu? Did you guys have time to goof off and get to know each other? Yes, we did. We had a lot of time. We had a whole summer, um, and they were wonderful. They were super cute. They were so different. Um, you know, uh, Barrett was... Uh, really into his G.I. Joe figures and very sweet, um, a little bit shy. Uh, Noah was like very physical, like he would enter the room with like a backflip or something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, awesome. And um, he <clears throat> stuck always running and moving. Um, we had like a pool in the hotel where we were all staying in Munich. So we would hang out in the pool and then super crazy. I guess in America, people don't do this, but we were in Germany. So we would always go to the beer gardens with all the um, the crew and they let kids in the beer gardens in Germany. So because everyone just hangs out outside yeah. and, you know, and drinks beer. So we were always hanging out with the crew at the beer gardens. Um, and of course, like I couldn't drink. So I learned right. to do all these like tricks with like coasters and like, I have all these like um, weird, like bar tricks with coasters from being at cool. <laughs> months, and months as a kid and just being yeah. bored out of my mind. <laughs> but so, you know, yeah, we hung out, we hung out. It was great. Thank you. <clears throat> Next question I have is um, from my guy, Ryan Drayson. He cannot show up today. Well, so what can you tell us about your careers in theater and dancing, your passion for dance? Um, I have always loved theater and dance uh, just from the moment I could walk. And, um, you know, it's interesting. I think that uh, for me, I don't really care if a project that's – a project is big or small. Um, I just, I just care if it's good. <laughs> and so um, I just really wanted to spend my life in, in the theater. There's something about being with a group of people and making something happen together as a team. It, this is it. We're doing it right now, right? Like it's just, it's just, yeah. There's this feeling where you bring something to life as a team that for me is like, is the best feeling. And so uh, I, I just loved it, whether it was dancing or whether it was acting, whether it was for, you know, 60 people in a little theater or whether it was a big tour in Europe. Like, I just, I just really like that feeling. So um, I was just always chasing it. Oh, and wow. that would be my my final question for me. And I got the next set of questions from NGG. Let me get this one out of the way. Hi. If you want to go ahead. Okay. So um, my question to you is, when you were filming the movie, did you know that this was going to be a very popular movie? Or did you have no idea? I had no idea. <laughs> um, and actually, at the premiere, I went to go see it. And I was kind of devastated initially because it was in German because they dubbed the whole film in German. And I thought nobody would ever see me doing it in English. I was like, Oh, it's just going to be in German. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. oh wow. I was like, well, I guess a few German people will see it. Hey. You know? <laughs> no, I don't think anybody could have known. And that's what's kind of cool about it. Right. I mean, it don't, I think it was really like fans that made it popular over, over time, you know? Yeah. Right. Um, <clears throat> the next question I have is, um, so I, as a child, used to watch The Never Ending Story three times a day. Um, was that something you rewatched or because you weren't on the movie, was the magic of the movie kind of gone for you? 
I did not watch it three times a day. That would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just watch it again after lunch. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, there's no other movies that like I fell in love with that way. Uh, for me, Princess Bride with that film, it was like the perfect film. Yeah. And I was obsessed with it. I just thought it was so witty. Uh, so I, I know, I know that thing and it's, it's, you know, the, there are films where the more times you watch them, you see new things in them each time, or you laugh even more at the joke that you're expecting. So it's really fun to do that. Okay. Um, all right. So another question I had was, um, did your classmates ever watch the movie? And if so, did they ask you questions about it? And what were your responses to the questions at the time? So at the time, my classmates really didn't know about it. Um, and it, when it was released in the States, initially it didn't have a big impact. I don't know if you guys real, like, I don't, it didn't, it was really a kind of, it became popular over time. So I guess my classmates knew that I was in it, but it, it wasn't a big deal. And then kind of towards high school, it started to become more like a bigger deal. Hmm. And then honestly, right. I was just so weird. I was like, I don't want to talk about that. Because I just want to, you know, when you're in high school, you want to fit in. You just yeah. want to be like everybody else. You want to be different. Well, maybe some people want to be different, but I just was like, I just wanted to be one of the gang. So um basically you know i was like oh don't don't ask her she doesn't like to talk about that so i never talked to anybody about it oh wow and then i came to new york and i became a dancer and i didn't even put it on my resume because dancers don't care if you're in the, like either like they want to know if you can dance they don't know, know if you can sit, you know so um and so it wasn't even on my resume and then i had like this whole dance career nobody knew oh wow <laughs> That's and cool, then, though. It was crazy, right? Yeah. And then, and then um, somebody contacted me about a Comic Con, and I was like, "What is that?" Oh boy, yeah, right. <laughs> and they were like, "Noah's going to be there," and I was like, "Oh, that would be so fun to see Noah. I haven't seen him in so long." And I went to the Comic Con, and I was amazed by how many people still cared about the Neverending Story. I couldn't believe it. Um, and it was moving and people were like, it inspired me to be the first person in my family to go to college and inspired me to become a chef or, you know, like, I don't know, they had all these stories about what the, the story meant to them or that they were bullied and it gave them courage to face it. And I was like, I'm so crazy that I've been hiding from this thing my whole life that is actually really special to be a part of. And, and maybe I should stop hiding. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We're hiding. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's okay. amazing. That's your um, final question, NGG. So I guess, yeah, my last question about the Never Ending Story was acting something you wanted or was it something your parents wanted for you in the very beginning? Acting was something I wanted. Definitely, definitely. Uh, my parents were archaeologists. Oh, wow. And they were just very um, academic and they were mostly interested in the um, sort of ancient, ancient civilizations thousands and thousands of years wow. ago. Like whatever's happening now is completely irrelevant, you know, but what was happening for the Zoroastrians at the fire temple was the thing. <laughs> you know? wow. so they were completely, you know, incredibly wonderful, smart, dynamic people, but like, my world, like acting and dancing was not their world. Um, so uh, so it was it was really me. And I think that's actually one of the reasons I didn't continue in film is it was so overwhelming for my parents. They were like, how are we supposed to navigate our child through Hollywood? You know, when we have to actually think about, uh, you know, Cyrus the Great, did I have to finish this paper? You know, like it was like, right. there was no way they could even understand the pitfalls of Hollywood. Um, you know, as a kid, I think there's kids that make it through Hollywood really well. And, you know, Sarah Conley's an example of like a young actress who's just doing a brilliant job or Natalie Portman. But there's equally so many stories of people who uh, didn't have the right protections around them and kind of were turned into meat mm -hmm. and exploited and ended up feeling really burned. And I think they just were so nervous 
that uh, that would happen. So um, I redirected my focus into dance, uh, which was a kind of smaller scale thing. And I loved it. I loved it equally to theater. Um, so and then I just kind of got sucked into the dance world. And dancing is I mean, everybody knows that dancing's fun, right? You go to a party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I dance. <laughs> Yeah. Like, why didn't you I I dance as a career? Dancing, <laughs> like I don't know. Dancing, time, but like I was having so much fun. Um, but then I kept on creeping into plays in New York, and then I ended up in a theater company for seven years. So acting just kept on like I just kept on mm -hmm. doing plays and getting pulled into plays, and and then I was secretly harboring a wish to to do film again, but it was sort of like. Oh, that's impossible. That's crazy. Like, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Right. I wanted to slip in something real quick, mentioning your parents were archaeologists. Um, is that where you followed into a little bit of footsteps being a professor as well? Definitely. My yeah. my father was a professor, and I think, you know, it's so much easier in a way sometimes to kind of do the thing you've seen and you know. So um, I, I was a professional dancer for 20 years. I ran my own company in New York and we toured everywhere. Uh, but then eventually I wanted to have a baby and this thing called health insurance. I don't know if you've heard of it. <laughs> so I don't know. I just was like, maybe now, at, you know, almost 40 while I'm pregnant, I should get that. Um, so I got a full-time job as a professor and it was fabulous. I, I really loved it. I, I ended up teaching uh, for 10 years. Um, in, in at Marymount Manhattan College, and I taught uh, choreography primarily and improvisation. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely sort of my roots, and so I felt very comfortable comfortable doing that. Nice. Well, thank you so much for that, uh, DJC. Oh man! And by the way, uh, Nintendo Gamer Girl, like I, I there was there was uh, movies I watched like back to back every day too, like Back to the Future <laughs> and Ghostbusters. So I would just. I understand that. I do understand that. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, I have, so I have a fun one. Did did you ever get to sit on Falcor, which is the flying dog, uh, during the downtime or any time during the filming of the movie? No, and I'm still upset about it. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm surprised no. you guys didn't sneak up, like, after the crew's starting to clean, you just kind of sneak over there. and they probably was, like, guarded, this, was, this was such a huge production. There were so many people, you know, you yeah. had like three people ushering you into every corner, but it's interesting. I'm going to the Bavarian studios in um, May. They invited me. Um, there's a documentary about the Neverending story being made. It's called life after a tray. You um, yeah. I would come for a private tour of the Bavarian studios to do some filming for it. And you know, why not? So I am going to ask, Yes. Do it! Yes! Yes! Get a picture! This is your time! Your That's time right. to ride Falcor! <laughs> That's so I think great! I really hope you do! That's so I great! <laughs> uh, oh yeah, this is this is a good one I wanted to know. So, during the dramatic scene, I want to know, were you actually crying during the final scenes? Uh, and, and are you able to kind of muster up and cry when you act. Yes, I was definitely crying in the final scenes. Wow. Um, I mean, acting is really hard and there's so much m more to it than, than, than crying. I mean, yeah. uh, but um, I basically could cry pretty much at the drop of a hat. I get sad really easily. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> <laughs> too. Well, right, yeah. Well, you yeah. seem very happy, so it's it's just it's just there. <laughs> well, that's cool, though. I mean, but it's like so, like just to, to see that it was like so. It was a great performance, you know. Uh, and I know you were you were a very young lady. You were what eleven when you made that? Yeah. But that was just like it was such an emotional part of that movie, and it made it so such a solid scene. It was that that's just amazing. That's cool. I mean, Glad I to know that. the reason that I love loved acting as a kid because you asked me if it was my parents or me and it was definitely me is the only place i didn't feel like a total weirdo 
was when I was acting because in life I would like see, you know, roadkill and it'd be like two hours of crying in the car. Oh. And my sister and my sister like, oh, you just stop, you know? And then <laughs> this happened as, oh, it started again, you know? Like, <laughs> and so in life, it was like, I was constantly trying to like, not be emotional and just like, okay, I got to like hold it together. Like these other people <laughs> around me and, you know, not be me. And then like, you got into like a, a, like a show and it was like, oh, you can, you can feel things like just really easily. And I was like, I, I can. And they're like, well, that's good. And I'm like, it is. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a really great. good thing. So, you know, I think for me, it was just like home. It was like the way that I'm built finally wasn't a problem. It was actually good. <laughs> so it ended up being a good trait to have, like, for that industry at that time, you know? Yeah, like, I'm sure, like, if I wanted to be an emergency medical doctor, not a good trait. <laughs> no, you'd be like, oh, my God, I got the news for you. Honey, it's my emergency. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor's crying. We're right. gonna need to no like, Oh my god, what's the news? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, next question. Oh. There you go. Oh yeah. Do you still keep in touch with anyone from the original movie cast? So as I said, I I see Noah now, and it's been really nice. We. <laughs> I tend to do the cons when he's going because I know he's going to be cool. there. So we tend to sit together and um, it really is so lovely to be together after all these years. And um, he's really gracious when he meets people. He's very giving. And I think it makes people excited to see the two of us together. It's like, oh, yeah. This. So, uh, so that's been really nice. It's kind of been a couple of years now where we meet up every couple of months at a, at a Comic-Con event. Nice. That's so great. There's so yeah. many of those nowadays too. You know, it's like we got one here in Detroit called uh, I think it's Motor City Comic Con. That's kind of on the suburbs of Detroit, and it just becomes bigger and bigger and bigger each year. And it's like, oh my god, like these things are huge events, and they're very cool to see so many things from games to movies to everything. It's just, it's just uh, amazing. Totally. <laughs> And okay, the fourth one was what was your audition process like when and how did you get this? But you kind of did say where how you kind of got the part, but I like when you went in to do your audition, like how what was that like? Uh well, so I I I came from a show that morning uh with pig face makeup on because I played Piglet. <laughs> oh, so I had like bright pink uh oh, wow. grease paint. And like big, like black, like nostrils, like I was piglet. <laughs> so I like came in and everyone looks really kind of polished and, you know, they all have agents and they're looking very like they know what they're doing. And I was like, I should take this off. So I'm like in the bathroom, like trying to scrub my makeup off and it's just like smearing. Oh, my <laughs> oh no. Yeah. So anyway, I get most of it off as much as I can. And I go in and I do the audition and I love the part. I loved it. I was just like so into it. I loved the lines. I was like, I really loved it. And then I get a call from the woman who was the casting agent that, that asked me to come. And she's like, listen, do you think you could come in for another audition and like not be in pig face makeup? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to recommend you get a dress. I don't know if you have one of those. And I was like, I will get a dress. And I will, you know. And so then she was really sweet. She was really rooting for me. And she, like, uh -huh. met me in the bathroom and, like, did my makeup. And um, I feel like she was really rooting for me. So yeah. uh, that was the second audition. And then I had to fly to Germany for a third audition. So wow. I had three. And the last one was really harrowing because you're so close and you know, it's either you or one other person mm -hmm. and um, you know, you just don't know which way it's going to go. So that one was really like a nail biter. 
Oh yeah, especially after going over to another country and then doing that. Oh man, that's it. I think it would have been so funny if like you you like I walked in, everyone's polished, I got the the pig face on, and they're like, no, she's the one. We're her. we're taking her. <laughs> yeah, she got the character. She got everything. She's got she's got pizzazz. <laughs> yeah, they were like, can so you great. see her? Not like that. <laughs> yeah, but but not like that for the movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. There you go. Uh, next question, DJC. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, this was well, this is a, a one I wanted to know. Is that I heard that I heard that they had contacted you when they were doing, I believe, the sequel, Never Ending, Sto Never Ending Story Two, and and you turned it down. You did not want to do that, correct? And and why was that? If that is correct, I I would say that um, you know my my parents and I had a conversation after the Never Ending Story sort of did get a little bit more popular, and there were some additional movie offers. And uh, they were just very straight with me. And, and they were like, you know, we just don't feel like we can safely navigate you through this. And if you want to do it yourself when you're an adult, then we'll, you know, support you in whatever you want to do. But, um, you know, as long as we're in charge, we're not going to capsize this boat on our watch. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes yeah. sense. So we're going to turn this down. Um, what they didn't tell me is like how much money was getting turned down. <laughs> and when I was a starving <laughs> dancer in New York, yeah. on like a hard boiled egg and a bagel a day, I was like, you know what? Maybe we could have done the sequel. Just you know, could have made a dance career, well, maybe. Yeah. Like, you know, whatever. Live and learn. What the hell? No, that's interesting, though. That really is. Yeah. No, but that's understandable. Oh, okay. I got another one here. So. <laughs> Do you believe in like, you know how they're rebooting everything uh, or, or more or less like sometimes they'll can do a continuation. Do you think like a reboot or a remake of never ending story would be like a good idea these days? Like, do you think that would be something? Like I you... feel when I, like when I answer this, like I immediately like divide, you know, it's like the people yeah. that. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Against, and then like I end up in one camp and then all mm -hmm. those people are going to be against me. So I'm going to wade in to this dangerous water <laughs> that you have stirred up in front you're of you. Right. Oh, no. Just don't sink in the swamp when you're in the water. That's, that's, that would that'd be... I to be honest, I like reboots. I'm, I said yeah. it. Because they don't replace the original. No. Right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I'm still going to watch the original Blade Runner. I'm never going to stop. Yeah. It's so good. But that doesn't mean that I can't in, enjoy and be curious about like what the new Blade Runner was, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, it's like, as an artist, I believe in creating things. I believe that every person, if they can, it's such a privilege and such a spiritually fulfilling thing to just make stuff. Like the, vi mm -hmm. the video you made create, today. Just to create, yeah. You know, just making stuff is so cathartic and this act of like bringing something into the world this act of bringing yourself in a literal way into the world is so it's a it's exciting and as a teacher that was my mission is to get my students to make things and be creative and as an I've made things my whole life so like the idea of saying like no you can't reboot it like it just right. doesn't it doesn't work for me because I feel like isn't the mission of like the never ending story to like use your imagination and reimagine yeah. Fantasia, right? Like right. every person's supposed to like bring themselves and imagine. And I don't know, there's not like three geniuses and we're just going to let them be the ones that are the, you know, the get to make Very it. Very true. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a reboot person. I heard they're rebooting um, Labyrinth. Did you guys hear that? Oh, wow. No. Yeah. I, I, I was just talking yeah. about that today. I no love I love Labyrinth. I love oh, yeah. And, oh, okay. Yeah. And we used the Jim Henson Creature Shop puppet. I was just going to bring that up. That's so awesome. And we're doing that puppet. And like, <laughs> yeah. I'm losing my mind. Like, I'm so excited <laughs> for this reboot. So I'm sorry, people who don't like reboots. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. Wait, some, some great like answer. Some <laughs> great answer. 